Hi there, and welcome to Math 6, Unit 8, Lesson 1. Got data. All right, so some of these lessons in this unit, as I go through them, you'll find that I can do parts of them with the video, and other parts are a little harder to do because they require you working with your classmates and doing some like surveying and taking some uh, data collection. Um, so sometimes I'll try my best, and other times I'll say I gotta skip this one. So today, there'll be some parts that I skip, but that's okay. All right, so here we go. First off, we have dots of data. Here's a dot plot for a data set. And we can see numbers from zero to four. We have various dots at different locations. We can see the whole number one. We can see two, we can see three, for example. And we have some that are in between. So we can see that we are, you know, for example, this must be about a half, right? And this is a fourth and three fourths, and then again, so on and so forth. So we have various points here that are there and a dot is representing one of those points. So determine if each of the following would be an appropriate label to represent the data in the dot plot, meaning what do these dots and what would be a good label for this like dot number line to be? So let's see, number of children per class. Well, let's think about this. Number of children per class. So would you have zero kids in the class? Can you have half of a kid in a class? Not really. I could see this working if you had whole numbers, one, two, three, and even small numbers for a very, very, very small class. But with the fractions, probably not. You can't have fourth of a, of one fourth of a child. That's just not possible. So that would not be a good label for this graph here at all. How about the distance between home and school in miles? Well, I guess you could be about a mile away from school or two miles or even a mile and a half from school, and that would be okay. So that one does seem to make pretty good sense hours spent watching TV each day. Well, can you watch half of an hour of TV or an hour of TV or even two and a half hours of TV? You certainly could, so that would be a good choice as well. How about the weight of an elephant in pounds? Again, if it was weights in general, you could say okay, but in pounds for an elephant? Do you have a half pound elephant? Probably not. Even a baby elephant weighs a lot, <laughs> doesn't it? More than two pounds, so no. And points received on a homework assignment? This is possible. I would say yes, it's possible. Maybe it's out of four points. Maybe it's a number out of four, and that's the max, or even a number out of three. Three is like 100%. Okay, it, sometimes your homework might be out of 10 or out of 25 points. I don't know what it's out of, but this could be. Okay, probably not ideally, but it probably could be. Think of another label that can be used with the same dot plot. Okay, write it below the scale of the dot plot and be sure to include the unit of measurement. Okay, so what I would probably do here is maybe something like um, time on social media. How about that? And we would do minute or do hours. Sorry, let's do hours because you kids are on that a whole lot, aren't you now? So maybe time on social media. Forget the TV. That's usually not what kids are on these days. You're on your social media. Your Instagram and Snapchat, whatever it's going to be, your TikTok videos. So maybe it's something like that. So that might be a thing that you could measure there. In your scenario, what does one dot represent? Well, in this case here, if I have one dot right here, this represents one person. And this is one person's time on social media in my case here okay so that's what it represents that's one person's time one person was on it for an hour one person was on it not at all okay some person was two and a half hours in your scenario what would a data point of zero mean that would mean they did no time on social media how about three and a quarter well that would mean three hours and what's a quarter of an hour that would be 15 minutes on social media. So a dot plot allows you to organize some information, right, and put things in a way that you can see, you know, how many people had a certain value or whatever it might be. It's a good way of seeing what's kind of going on. All right. So when we go to the next activity here, what you're going to do if you're in class is you're going to survey your class with a series of questions here. Now keep whatever you have here, keep your data because you're going to use it for other activities throughout the unit, okay? So you do want to keep this and make a mark of this page. So your teacher is going to give you some questions um, that you can use to learn about students in your class. You each have different ones you're going to do and you're going to answer them and collect your data and then we'll show that all together. So I'm going to take a look at just a couple of these real quick, numbers one, two, and three. 
which will be used for other things. So make sure you keep track of these data points for future things. Okay, so first of all, how long does it usually take to you to travel to school and answer the nearest mile? How long? So we're talking about time, right? So we're talking about time here for how long it'll take to travel. And so what I did real quick is I said, well, let's pretend I have a class of about, well, I didn't do a like class, but I went and said, let's say I have anywhere from my school, anywhere from one minute to 20 minutes for kids to get to school. So I wrote down a little list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So these are the minutes, okay? And then I went ahead and said, how many kids does it take that many minutes to get to school? And what I found, just doing a quick little survey, is we had about six kids that took five minutes to get to school. We had about nine kids that said about 10 minutes to go to school. We had a couple that said 12. We had about three that said maybe 15. And then we had another uh, 10 that said it took them 20 minutes to get to school. So in all, what you can see here is there are a total of 30 students that we, we surveyed here. All right. Now why would I have numbers like this? Well, it depends on how they got to school. In my case here, there are 10 kids that were riding a bus to school and it took 20 minutes to get there from getting on their bus stop and driving around town, picking up other stops and getting here. Okay, so some kids are in there differently than others. So this is one example of how you could organize that data if you did that one. So I'm going to come back to this later on, I'm sure, but I'll use this for now. How about how do you travel to school most days? How do you get to school? All right, so when I walked around, I said, well, how do you get there? We had four kids, just a little tally, four kids that walked to school. We had five kids that rode a bike to school, two kids that rode their scooters. We had nine kids five, six, seven, eight, nine that were on a car, and those 10 kids that took 20 minutes to school were in a bus. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I just have the numbers there. You can put them as a tally. You can actually write the number down, whatever works for you, okay? All right, and then how tall are you without your shoes on? Answer the nearest centimeter. So I had to make another little chart here, and what I did this time is I took each of the 30 kids, and I wrote down, this is my kid, my student here, and I just kind of numbered them. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. And I'm off the page. No problem. That's okay. And then um, I just put mine in order, so this wasn't actually kids kid later on. I just put it in order so I can see it now. So if you put these in order, uh, kid number one was 138 centimeters, and then I had 142, 144, a 146, 147, 147, 148, and then I had a 150, and another 150, a 152, 152, 152. So three of those. Then I had two 153s, I had two 154s, I had two 155s, and I had two 156s, and I had one 158, a 160, another 160, a 164, and I had two 168s, 168, a 170, a 176, a 176, and a 178. So a whole lot of values there, okay? Now, um, if you measured in class, I could take you a little bit of time, but those are the numbers that um, we generated here for how tall kids were in one class of 30 kids. So we have 30 kids, how tall they were, centimeters, 30 kids, how they got to school, and 30 kids for how long it took them to get to school. One more one we could do here was how many do they have siblings, uh, which means brothers or sisters. 22 of them said yes, they have siblings, and 8 of them said nope, no siblings there. So those are just some data points for the first ones. Again, you could do the rest in your class there. A few other sample ones here we did just to kind of give you some more numbers. So other than traveling from school, uh, what do you do right after school on most days? Rather than, so 5 said they had a snack. There were 8 said they went home and got did homework right away. Five were on their phone, not necessarily talking on the phone, but messaging and things like that. 
and 12 kids were in sports after school, so they just went straight to sports practice there. All right, so there's where our kids were there. And then in terms of if you could meet one of the celebrities, what would you choose? We had two that said they meet a state leader or whatever. Um, they were thinking the president. We said that's fine. We had 14 that wanted to see an athlete, eight to see a movie star, six wanted to see a music celebrity, and nobody wanted to see an author. So those were the numbers that we came up with there from our data from our survey. So if you need some data to look at, you can certainly use our data there and use that for the next activities. All right, so I'm gonna have to come back to this other stuff too. So here we go, number three. The list of survey questions in the activity earlier can help you complete these exercises. The first survey question about travel time produced what we call numerical data, numerical data. Right? And we call it numerical data because when we looked at the time travel, we had six people going five minutes, five miles, nine or minute, five minutes, nine going 10 minutes, two going 12 minutes. So we had numbers. Whenever we're talking about numerical stuff, we're talking about some numbers of some sort that you can measure there. So uh, identify two other questions that use kind of the numbers. Well, one we said that I did here with you was number three. And what we used number three, we were measuring the heights of students, right? And how, how tall they were. And what we used to measure in that case was centimeters. So we had a long list here of how tall people were. This is numerical data here. This is how tall people were. So one form of data that you organize is numerical with a whole bunch of different numbers that all represent stand for a different person or different item. You can think of a second one if you choose to. I move on to number two. Other way of or organizing things are what's called categorical data. So we talked about the travel method, how people got to school. That's categorical, like they walked, right? If they if they walked or took a car, those were categorical. Those are categories or or the different ways people got to school. We weren't really worried about how many cars came to school. We're talking about the different ways. It's a category, different than how, a number. So another one that's a category would be, be like number 10, which was what you did after school. What was measured was activities after school, okay? And the unit of measure, well, in that case there, um, was there a unit of measure for what they did after school? Oh, that's over here, over here, activities. Sorry, after school, number 10. So I gotta erase that, sorry. I read it in the right place and then wrote it in the wrong place. <laughs> so, activities out of school, there's no unit of measure. That's right, I caught myself. Because there's no unit of measure there, it's just what did you do? You see, you don't need a unit of measure for a categorical, it's not needed. It's just what are you talking about and how many different categories of things do you have? Like things like favorite color, favorite movie, favorite ice cream. If you're asking people categories, then you're finding out what type people like, okay? So what type or what kind? So think about the responses of these survey questions. Do they produce numerical or categorical data? So numerical is a number that you can compare and measure and work with. Okay, category is a type, right? So how many pets do you have? Well, we're talking about how many. That's going to be numerical, isn't it? Okay, I'm just going to write in for numerical. In for numerical, I'll write C for categorical. How many years have you lived in this state? Well, how many years? That's gonna be a number. You might have been here two years, you might have been here five years. Different numbers, it's numerical. What is your favorite band? A band, a favorite of something, a band, is a type, it's a category. So that makes sense for that one, that'd be category. What kind of music do you like best? Well, when we're talking about the kind of music, we're talking about the type of music, so again, that would be a categorical data. This is a tricky one here. What is the area code of your school's phone number? Okay, so my area code is, for example, 559. That's my area code. Now, does that number mean anything? Um, not really. The number here is not really a number in the sense of like keeping track of different numbers. This is actually representing the type or um, Sorry, the word just left my head. The type, or it's it's really it's a category, right? It's a category, actually, 
because it's a group of numbers, group of, it's an area that that phone um, area code works for. So it's 559 there. If I was maybe in um, you know, a different area, maybe I have a 949 area code. The 949 is not greater than, less than, you're not comparing the numbers. The number represents an area. It's an area code. It's not an actual number in the sense that you could compare and say, oh, this one's bigger than that one. It's not that kind of number. So because you can't compare it, it's just a category. Where were you born? That's going to be a category. It's just a bunch of places. And then how much does your backpack weigh? Well, when we're talking about weight, that's going to be something you could measure, and that's a weight that's going to be numerical right there. Okay? So, lots of variety of things. Some are numerical, some categorical. And like every once in a while you get ones like this, you think about and go, what is it asking me to do? Okay, it's more of a category there. And that's one of the big things today with this activity. So name two characteristics you can investigate to learn more about your classmates. Okay, um, maybe you could find out, a question you could ask them is, what month were you born in? That was the first thing I thought of. You know, who has summer birthdays? Who has winter birthdays? And you could organize those things there. What month were you born in? Okay. Um, so that's going to be a little bit more categorical, right? And the reason it's categorical is it's, it's not a number of people born in June. It's going to be how many people were born in which month. But you just look organizing by category. It's months. One that we might numerical it would be something more like how many, and there's a key word there, uh, siblings, brothers and sisters, do you have? When you do that, you're going to get numbers, aren't you? you? Get numbers as an answer and numbers to compare. Maybe zero, maybe one, maybe three, maybe seven. Who knows? All right. All right. So let's look at the Are You Ready for More real quick since we did skip the bigger activity. Pry and Hong collected data on the birth months, well, that's what we did here, right, of students in a class. Here are tables showing the records of the same groups of students. Pry has showed it like this, January, April, January, February, October, and so on. Han did one, four, one, two, like numbers. How are the records alike and how are they different? Okay, in terms of being alike, it's actually the same information, isn't it? January is the first month. And there's January, first month, January, first month. And of course, April is January, February, March, April, the fourth month. And we can see that's the case here. So it's the same information. In terms of difference, it's a different in terms of how do they label it. One is more with words, and one is with numbers. Okay, But it's the same data, the same information, just a different way of, of writing down what you're looking for. Okay, So what kind of data or categorical numerical do you think in the variable birth month produces? This is, again, one you be careful with, right? Numerical has to deal with numbers, but numbers are ones that numbers you can compare. Are you comparing 11 to 4? Would you say, for example, that November, as a number 11, is a bigger month than April, which is a 4? Is that what you do? Can you say November is a bigger month? No, that doesn't make any sense at all, does it? So because they're not numbers you can compare, this is really just talking about categories, so we would say this is categorical. Okay, so something to think about that. All right, all right. I think we're on to our summary for the day. Let's take a look at the summary. The table contains data about ten dogs. You can see the dogs' names. You can see their weight and their breed. The weights of the dogs listed here is numerical. You can compare which weighed more, which weighed less. That's numerical data with the weights. But the dog breeds, the types of dogs, is categorical, right? German Shepherd, Pug, Beagle, we have three different types of dogs. So we have categorical and we have numerical data that we use and we can use those to compare different uh, pieces of information. One of the things we can do with numerical data, okay, numerical data, is we can use a dot plot with numerical data. And that would help you to sometimes, sometimes called a line plot, but a dot plot or line plot, in order to organize that numerical data in a way that help you kind of compare it and make some 
um, make some, uh, draw some conclusions about it. So for example, we have a large group over here and a large group over there. There's definitely a difference in weights between the dogs and our table, isn't there? Some small dogs and some big dogs. Okay, we're gonna pause there, let you work on your homework, and then come back and check it on that together in just a couple minutes. All right, homework time. Tyler asked 10 students at his school how much time in minutes it takes them to get home, from home to school. So time in minutes to get from home to school. Determine if each of these dot plots could represent the data he collected. All right, so he asked 10 students about how long in minutes it took to get from home to school. So for dot plot one, we have five minutes, six minutes, eight, 10, 10, 12, 13, 16, 20. That seems okay. I'm okay with that. You have between five and 20 minutes to get home. That sounds about right. That's what my class had as well. Dot plot two, we have 80 minutes, 90 minutes, 120, 150, 200, 300 minutes to get home. Wow, that's crazy. I would say no to this one because that just doesn't make sense. You're not gonna have 300 minutes in order to get home. That's five hours. If you do 300 divided by 60, you end up with five hours. If you're going five hours to school, five hours back, that's a long, long time uh, for kids living here in the United States. Other countries may be a little different sometimes. You have to walk a long way to get to school if you live in other parts of the world. Surprise, surprise. Here, we have negative five. Well, right away, I know that's a problem, right? And you can't have a negative time to get home, all right? You, it's just not gonna work. So we're gonna say no to that and to having a negative time. And this last one here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six kids. Well, the six kids is not gonna represent the 10 in the student survey. So it's not gonna match, so it's a no as well because he asked 10 kids and that's only six. This data does not match who he talked about. Number two, here's a list of 10 questions, a list of questions. For each question, decide if it represents numerical, so in numbers you can compare, or categorical data, or like different types. All right, what is your favorite breakfast food? And that is different types, so we'd say categorical. How did you get to school this morning? Okay, car, bike, walking, that's different ways, categorical. How many different teachers do you have? So how many, it's gonna be numerical. What is the last thing you ate or drank? So we're talking about a category, right? An item, a variety, a type. How many minutes did it take you to get ready this morning? That's gonna be numerical. All right, next. Number three, write two questions that you could ask the students in your class that will result in categorical um, data. For each question, explain how you would know the response would produce categorical. So let me give you one example, okay? Um, what is your favorite type of soda, right? And think about the responses I can get. I could get maybe like something like Pepsi, I could get Coke, I can get 7-Up, I could get root beer. These are types, aren't they? So that makes them categorical. All right, how about the next one? We wanna think about a numerical one, okay? I could say how uh, many uh, cups of soda do you drink? each week, right? And you might say, I might have kid numbers, I might have kids that have a variety. I can use a number chart here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, Some or zero. Some kids have maybe only one. I have a few that maybe have two sodas a week, a couple with three, I might have several with maybe four, maybe have somebody with five, and a whole bunch with six. That's more numerical. I can get numbers of, the, of, of, uh, of soda, uh, sodas drank during the week like that. So that's numerical. Number four. Our last one here. We have the triangle, DEF, and those are the points there. So we're going to plot the triangle on the coordinate plane and label it. So D is at negative four, negative four. So there's D. E is at negative two, negative four. So there's E. And F is at negative three, negative one. So there's F. So there's our triangle right there looking great. 
check. Name the coordinates with three points that are inside the triangle. Wow, that's going to be tricky, right? I could definitely put one here at negative 3, comma, negative 2. I could put one here at negative 3, comma, negative 3. And where else? Well, does it have to be on a line? No, it doesn't have to be on a line. I could put it right there, and it's on negative 3 still, and now we're at negative 3 and a half, and that works just fine. Are there other points? Sure, there's a point there, a point there. You just have to use fractions for any other ones you use, and that is just fine as well. What's the area of the triangle? Well, the area of a triangle is 1 half times the base times the height, and our base is 1, 2. Our height is 1, 2, 3. And so we have half times a half, half times two, which is one, or I could do two times three, which is six. So a half times six, which is simply three. So our area is three units squared, is our area for that triangle there. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.